Let's take a couple minutes and talk about the string methods index of and last index of. So I have a sample file here where I've got two variables, word and sentence. The names of the variables are not important. What is important is the fact that we've got strings inside of here. I've got one word inside this one, and here we have a much longer string that has some punctuation in it. It's got spaces in it in addition to just letters. Index of allows us to search inside of a string for any other string. So I can say, hey, I want to find the letter E, or I want to find the word the. Index of allows us to start searching at the left side, go through the string, looking for some sort of match. So let's do an example. Um, I'm going to do my shortcut because I'm going to be doing lots of console.logs. So I want to do index of and I'm going to be looking for, let's say, the letter A. There we go, lowercase a. Because this is a method, what goes in front of the method has to be the object of the correct type. So it's the string object that has the method index of. In this case, I'm going to start off by saying word. This variable is an object of type string. So I can say word index of a, that is going to search for the first occurrence of this, starting at the left hand side and going through the first occurrence of the letter a will be returned. So I will get the position of that and I'll wrap this inside of a call to log. So let's run our script using node. There we go, three. This is position three. Now just like arrays, strings, the positions of each of the characters inside of a string start with the number zero. So this capital letter E, that's position zero, then position one, then position two, then position three. A gives us three. Let's look for the letter E and see what we get. Minus one. Okay, now I was saying that it starts with position 0. So why am I getting a negative 1? Well, that's the answer that you get with index of if the string that you're looking for is not found. There is no lowercase e inside of here. So this is a case-sensitive search. e and capital E do not match. If I change this to a capital E and I run this again, 0. Okay, that is the first position here. So what if you want to do a case insensitive search? Well, in cases like that, where I want to find E, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lowercase version of this string. I'm going to run this. That's going to work. So if I take this string, take the lowercase version of it, and then I'm searching for the lowercase match, I do find it that way. If we write out word here, you can see I haven't actually changed the original word. All I've done is I've temporarily taken this, converted it into lowercase, so I have a temporary container with the lowercase version, and that's what's being passed into here to do this search. If I wanted to replace it, if I really did want to convert the original value to lowercase, I would have to do something like this. locale lowercase or local just lowercase. There we go. Now, if I do that, that will actually change the original string. In most cases, I don't want to do that. So this is change the original. We don't want to do that. All right, so we know that we can search for a letter. We know that we get back either a negative one if something's not found or we get the position last index of, how does that one differ? Well, last index of does the exact same thing as index of, except it starts at the right side and it scans through in this direction. So it starts at the end of the word and goes backwards through the string. So we'll do the same thing here. Word to lower case. A little bit.
bit of a lag there, sorry. And last index of, again, we're going to look for E. Find out where it's found. Position zero. So this first one was zero, this second one is zero. Finds it in the same place, it's just the direction of the search was different. Now let's swap these out and we'll use sentence instead of word. So much longer and in this case we have multiple E's. So there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, and so on. So there's a whole bunch of them. And we'll say this is the last index of. Alright, so our last two numbers, 5 and 41. This one was 5, and this one was 41. Simply because here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that was the first match that we found. 41, we started here. Going backwards, this is position 41. Now it's not 41 characters in on this direction. It still starts counting with the I in in. This is position 0. Go all the way through here, we get to position 41. Okay, so that's index of, last index of, searching with single characters. But we're not limited to just single characters. We can also do a search inside sentence or any string. Let's just look for the word the. So here I'm searching for these things together. It's going to find where the T matches. So whatever position the T is at, that's the number that's going to come back. So we look here, 0, 1, 2, 3. Position 3 should be what we get back. And there it is, right at the end, position 3. If we were to say the space, well, it's still going to match this one. It would match this one afterwards. But if I said the C, now we're talking about this right here. This is the only match for the and C. There is position 31. So this is position 31 right here, where those five characters are. Now, for both index of and last index of, there is another um, parameter that we can pass in. We can say, I want to start looking at a specific point. So I know that the began at position 3, but what if I said, I want to find the first instance of the, or the first instance of the letter E that comes after this comma. So how could I do that? Inside sentence, I want to find, sorry, there's a little bit of lag happening here. There we go. I want to find the letter E, lowercase letter E, and you can see the code complete comes up here and says number from. So it's expecting a number, it is the position from where to start searching. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The comma is at position 10. So starting at position 10, that's what I'm going to log out. Where's the first E after position 10? Well, 11, 12, 13 should be our answer. Let's clear this screen out, run this again. 13. There it is. So this was the first E after position 10. What if I put in position 13? I know there was a letter at 13, and 13 still gives me this. So this is the starting position. It doesn't start after this, but it starts at that position looking for the letters. Okay, excellent. So we've got a starting position. We've got the string that we're looking for, and it is a case-sensitive match. And we can also chain these together. So let's say instead of putting in the number 13, where I had to manually go and search, let's say I want to find out where the first the is after the word we. So I'm looking for the 
Oh, here, I'll create a new one. Just to save a little bit of space here, I'll comment out these other ones. There we go. So I'm looking for the word the, and I want to start after the word we. So if I search for the letter W, or search for the word we, or we with a space, what I'm going to get is right here, the W, that point. Let's say I wanted to start searching after that. Well, I can just chain these together. I can go inside of here and say, hey, you know what? In my sentence, I'm going to be looking for we and a space. So I want to know the first instance of this. Where do I find that? Plus one, two, three. There we are. So I'm looking for the first instance of we with a space after it. I'm going to add three. So I start after that, be right here, the D. And starting at that point, where is the first the that I'm going to find? And there we go, 31. Same as we had back before, right here, when we were looking for the first the. This one was 31. And that's what we get again here. All right, so I hope that helps you understand index of and last index of. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll leave a, a link to the code just for this code inside the comments as well. And as always, thanks for watching.